Hey, any fash, it is the 3rd of February, 2023. 2323, interestingly enough, and I do pray you're all doing well. This came across my radar a few days ago, and immediately it made me think of one specific thing. The tunnels under Jerusalem and the Ark of the Covenant. In my personal opinion, what this handprint is saying, that all these archaeologists are just mystified. They have no idea what it could be. Seriously, they're all saying it. Mysterious handprint. It's so mysterious. Nobody knows what it is. The Antiquities Authority are baffled by what this handprint could actually stand for. Well, as soon as I saw it, to me, it's the universal hand sign for stop. Halt. Don't go any further. That's what it is, in my humble opinion. So, it's telling them to not enter here. There is a danger if you're not authorized to come in here. Like the two witnesses, you know, they may be the only ones qualified or allowed to go into the tunnels and bring the ark out. You know, think about it. Moses and Elijah or Enoch or whoever, we don't know, but they actually enter in and bring the ark out as part of the two witnesses. Because I believe this connects to the tunnels that lead to the ark of the covenant in Jeremiah's grotto. It's, it's an amazing story. If you have not looked into Ron Wyatt, I suggest you do. Do I hang my faith and my hope and everything on Ron Wyatt? Absolutely not. However, it is absolutely fascinating. If you look at where they found this thing, right? This is the North Wall. This is the most recent wall in like the 1500s, 1600s. Suleiman the Great built this wall. He built all the walls. He rebuilt Jerusalem. But this road that they're digging up where they found the hand is... Suleiman Avenue and if you go to a map I mean this is just crazy you guys this is just an old map of Jerusalem this is Jeremiah's grotto right there where the ark was discovered you know with the blood of Jesus on it just saying Temple Mount before Jerusalem was breached and sacked it is my personal belief that Jeremiah took the Ark of the Covenant through the tunnels and hid it in Jeremiah's grotto. And they just happened to be doing all this excavation right here. In the exact spot where that would likely cross that branch of the tunnels. Right down under here. This is just my theory, but I'll tell you what, it fits. And it just so happens that today is 15,003 days since Ron Wyatt found the Ark back in 1982, 2323, with the blood on the mercy seat. If you read in the book of Matthew and the Gospels where it talks about Christ's death, it says the earth shook violently and the rocks were rent. Right to the left of the cross hole at the base of where Christ died on the cross, the rock was rent. After Christ died, and the centurion spear, spear into Christ's spleen, and the blood and water came out, it went down through that crack. It went on to the mercy seat of the Ark of the Covenant that God had arranged to be hidden in that chamber 600 years before Christ died. Normally, crucifixions didn't involve a whole lot of blood. However, it is stated that they wanted to make sure Christ was dead, so they stuck the spear in. I'll try and leave links for you guys to some of Ron Wyatt's stuff. I will. They claim that this hand was from the Crusader period. That made me think of the Raiders, the Crusaders of the Lost Ark. Remember that movie? Shut your eyes, Mary, and don't look at it, no matter what happens. 
And of course, the woman's name is Miriam, the sister of Moses and Aaron, who made the Ark of the Covenant, right? So they find this moat that just happens to be 33 feet by 23 feet, which to me is just ridiculously amazing. So they have this right hand print on there, which, which to me is the symbol for stop, go no further. And I'm just hypothesizing that this is one of the entries that leads to the tunnels that bring you to the Ark of the Covenant. Now, there are some stories going back to the 80s after the discovery that the Israeli government sent men in to actually inspect this for themselves. And they were killed. I mean, this is something that, you know, you can just call it hearsay. But the fact of the matter is, this story witnesses to my spirit scripturally. You know, he finds the blood on the Ark of the Covenant, right? And I could take you to so many scriptures, but 1 John 5 is just amazing. He's talking about Jesus who came by water and blood, right? Not water only, but water and blood, right? The Spirit bears witness because the Spirit is truth. Because there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. And there are three that bear witness in earth. Think about this. The spirit and the water and the blood. And these three agree. My spirit agrees. If we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. I also believe that the Ark of the Covenant will serve as part of the two witnesses. Because the two cherubims are two olive trees. They are. The two candlesticks, which to me represent the flame, the fire of God, are the two tables with his commandments on them. His word, fire, right? This is just one interpretation. I, I just don't really know, but... This is witnessing to me that the Ark of the Covenant is, in fact, part of the two witnesses. Uh, we can go to, let's go to Hebrews 9. This just fascinates me to no end. Hebrews 9, 5. Look at this. He's talking about, he's describing the holy place and the Ark of the Covenant and all the articles that Nebuchadnezzar carried away, but there's no mention of the Ark of the Covenant anywhere being carried away, neither by Nebuchadnezzar or Titus or any of them. It's just gone because God's going to bring it back as a witness. That's my belief. You know, it had the golden censer and the Ark of the Covenant overlaid round about with gold, where the golden pot of manna and Ara's rod that, rod that budded in the tables of the covenant. And over it, the cherubims of glory shadowing the mercy seat. Now listen to this right here. Of which we cannot now speak particularly. Now why would the writer of Hebrews say that? Why? And not only that, if we go to Daniel 9, which talks a lot about this. I mean, this just blows me away. 9495. He actually gives the elements of the Ark of the Covenant in this. When he's praying in supplication for Israel and the people, this is Daniel. And he refers back to the books of Jeremiah, talking about the 70 years. But Jeremiah is the one who hid the Ark of the Covenant in Jeremiah's grotto. And I prayed unto the Lord my God and made my confession, which is an atonement which is what is made on the mercy seat every year, and said, O oh Lord, the great and dreadful God, keep the covenant, and the ark of the covenant, the mercy seat, and mercy to them that love him, and to them that keep his commandments that are in the ark, because we have sinned and have committed iniquity, and have done wickedly and have rebelled. And that's every single one of us until we are renewed, reborn in the spirit of the living God through the blood of Jesus Christ. It's the only way. And, and Jeremiah, again, listen to what he said in Jeremiah 3. 
right? This is another fascinating little tidbit for you here. Jeremiah 3.16, he's talking about the faithless Israel calling them to repentance. But in 3.16, okay, turn, O backsliding, this is 3.14, turn, O backsliding children, saith the Lord, for I am married unto you, and I will take you one of a city and two of a family, and I will bring you to Zion, and I will give you pastors according to my heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding, and it shall come to pass when you be multiplied and increased in the land in those days, meaning these days, saith the Lord, they shall say no more the ark of the covenant of the Lord. Neither shall it come to their minds, neither shall they remember it, neither shall they visit it, neither shall that be done any more. And at that time they shall call Jerusalem the throne of the Lord. That is the Ark of the Covenant. Now, I am not fully understanding this, but I know that it all ties together. One way or the other, it ties together. I just wanted to share this stuff with you guys because it's amazing to me. This is literally what I believe we're looking at right here. This is a sign to whoever comes across this Look at these guys brushing that. That just cracks me up. There is a tunnel behind there. I'm convinced of it. And it leads to the Ark of the Covenant. That's my firm belief. So I'm just putting it out there. It's a fascinating story. Absolutely mind-boggling to me. And please understand, this is not a teaching. This is simply to edify you and to encourage you to continue seeking and searching knowledge and understanding through the spirit of the living God because only he can truly teach us. And I know he's revealing truth to us here. I can only see it in part and I give it to you so that perhaps you can bring something forth from it. That's my hope and prayer. Look at this, the 70 weeks that Daniel was talking about, right? But this is absolutely crazy. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem unto the Messiah, the prince shall be seven weeks and threescore and two weeks, 62 weeks. The street shall be built again and the wall, even in troublous times. Now again, I do not know how to put this into a precise interpretation, but I know when the Holy Spirit is showing me something. A trench, as in a moat, as dug. You see what I mean? So it's, it's literally talking about a moat. But the covenant that he confirms, which just means to strengthen, I believe this is absolutely connected to the Abraham Accords, which when they strengthen them, it will become a covenant with many. Ties into the whole climate change thing. Because time has quite literally run out. Here we need a vast military style campaign to marshal the strength of the global private sector with trillions at his disposal. They got the Abraham family house, the Noahide moral law, because it's going to happen quickly. We've seen a relatively slow build till now. Going through these birth pains, they're getting quicker and quicker and quicker. And at some point, bam, there's going to be a birth. You understand? It just comes when it comes. And I pray that we're all prepared and that he finds faith when he comes. You just can't tell me that none of these archaeologists have any clue why this perfectly chiseled right hand print with all these caverns behind the wall. You can see where it was mortared, you know, centuries ago. They know exactly what it is and they know exactly what it leads to. I'm telling you, they've known about this for a long time. And at some point, the ark and the blood will be revealed as the ultimate witnesses that no man will be able to deny. 
let God be true, but every man a liar. All glory to God. That's what I got for you guys. I'm going to link just about everything and anything that I can come up with, but I hope this edifies someone. I do hope you're all doing well. Hang in there. God bless each and every one of you. Peace and grace to you. Many fish. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, 